So why are people buying software-defined wide area networking, or SD-WAN, anyway? Five key drivers show us the answer. First off, nearly everyone is in the cloud. I know because I ran a cloud company for years hosting banks, major financial firms, healthcare companies, law offices, and everything from small to extra large businesses of all flavors. There's no better or faster way to get connected to a cloud and have a quality link than SD-WAN. We'll get into the reasons why, but driving that quality of experience, or QOE as they call it, in the cloud, has a lot to do with how you're connected to it, and SD-WAN helps that effort tremendously. Second, these cloud services deliver a new and dizzying array of choices when it comes to applications, so it's no surprise, but apps are literally exploding onto the digital landscape of every business out there via software as a service, or SaaS providers as we like to call them. For example, many businesses rely on Salesforce.com, Zendesk for help desk ticketing, and thousands of other SaaS providers every single day. So, in addition to protecting your connectivity to these critical resources, being able to prioritize applications is vitally important. SD-WAN gives you the ability to see, in real time, what apps are running, limit their bandwidth, or block them entirely. That's a critical feature to have when you're dealing with a boatload of new apps, many of which pop up without any warning in the middle of your business network, as users are often allowed to bring their own devices to work. And even if, let's say, you decide to allow everyone access to, for example, YouTube, SD-WAN allows you to do things like limit them to standard definition videos, not high definition videos, which can literally be the difference between one meg per user to as much as five megs or more per user. And if you do the math, 20 users would consume 100 meg or more of bandwidth. That can really bring things to a standstill depending on the size of your existing pipe. Third, remote offices are now the norm. And whether it's a home office or a much larger office, the services are often very similar, supporting IT, IP phones, internet, private connectivity to corporate resources, and having robust security if internet is allowed out of the edge versus being forced out of a central location at corporate, etc. Because SD-WAN is an overlay technology, it can run any type of underlay circuit you throw at it, including MPLS, internet, LTE, EOC, fiber, broadband, and bond them all together into one big pipe. More on that later in this deck, but overlays are the encrypted SD-WAN tunnels with the traffic, and underlays are any type of circuit that's being used for transport. Easy, right? Fourth, SD-WAN tackles network complexity. Ads, moves, changes to your network all involve a lot of risk and in turn burn a lot of resources to manage and engineer them. With SD-WAN, all of this can be done transparently with no downtime to the customer thanks to many different features, including sub-second failover that protects even stateful traffic from being disrupted. Last but not least, the legacy way of managing a wide area network, or WAN, was very time consuming, often requiring a network expert or DevOps expert, plus numerous types of management software to implement network-wide changes. And when you consume a lot of time, you consume a lot of money and inherently incur a lot of risk. Adding or deleting circuits had to be planned. Changes to internet circuits often meant that migration of things like IP address blocks changes the DNS and other painful considerations. Um, that's no longer the case. SD-WAN is phenomenally easier to configure, uh, make and roll back changes, and allows the migration of public IP blocks and internet facing services without the need for complex routing protocols like BGP or changes to DNS. For example, AirSpring can deliver a public IP block over SD-WAN that stays sticky with the particular site that's hosting the resources facing the Internet, and AirSpring uh, SD-WAN makes it impervious to underlay circuit disruptions and allows the site to move to a new carrier or even new location without having to change the IPs. Amazing, right? So over the last few months, myself and our team at AirSpring spoke to dozens of SD-WAN vendors. We analyzed their sales pitch, position in the competitive landscape, uh, their venture capital funding, if any, uh, revenue, employee base and org structures, their hardware, software, architecture, portal interfaces, APIs, features, coding methods, and specific implementation techniques. Uh, we met with their management, engineering, and development teams, and finally subjected numerous vendors to live trials. It's a daunting task, as you can see uh, from all the logos that are in this graphic. And as always, when the technology landscape changes, AirSpring updates its offering. So the takeaway from this slide is this. Almost none of the SD-WAN vendors are like the others. Some have features no one else has. And even when they claim to have the same features, they are often implemented in a wildly different manner than their competitors. Yet through it all, 
each one in any given scenario might be the perfect solution above all others. However, the 30 plus vendors and more entering the market every day can really be put into four categories. Long haul vendors are companies like Arioca and two to three others who specialize in primarily international connectivity where there's an emphasis on long distance backhaul and in turn the need to accelerate and optimize applications at a very granular level often within the TCP UDP protocol stacks. Carrier grade SD-WAN vendors like VeloCloud, Viptela, who is acquired by Cisco, Versa Networks, Fatpipe, Nuage, Silverpeak, and a handful of others focus on integration with carrier IP core technologies like MPLS, the ability to massively scale, things like multi-tenancy, and being able to bond public and private circuits like MPLS plus internet into larger unified pipes is something that carrier grade SD-WAN solutions do best. Enterprise SD-WAN solutions make up the bulk of the vendors in the market today, with companies like CloudGenix, Accessa, Elfeek, and others who focus on features important to the do-it-yourself enterprise crowd with robust uh, routing features, intuitive interfaces, simplified setup, and so on. Last but not least are the over-the-top or the OTT providers. These SD-WAN solutions like Big Leaf and others don't provide any site-to-site -site or land-to-land -land connectivity, Rather, they often go in front of firewalls in many cases and enhance popular services like VoIP and SIP trunks, virtual desktops, and software as a service offerings. As such, they often target cloud service providers and or managed service providers eager to enhance their customers' experience. But as you can see, all four types, um, whoever has their PC, please put it on mute. As you can see, all four types of SD-WAN vendors fill unique areas in the connectivity landscape. Now, many of you already know that Airspring is a price leader who specializes in multi-site deployments. This is because Airspring is a carrier aggregator, not just a reseller of 16 plus carriers, but we have facilities and skin in the game via data centers across the nation in places like Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, and New York that are connected to all these carriers via NNI gateways. We are the glue. We mark and remark IP packets with quality of service, DSCP values, end-to-end -end between all carriers while creating a unified network and enforcing that contractually, even as we foster personal relationships with each peer carrier's engineers to get the job done. As such, you get all the choices, but none of the penalties in every deployment that you make with Airspring. Think about it. Any carrier, any technology, any solution, any vendor, yet one team, one quote, one unified network, one support structure, and one bill. This is really important when things go wrong. I'll give you a real life example. Airspring processes over 30 billion SIP phone calls a year and that number is rapidly increasing along with our market share. That's over 2.5 billion a month, or roughly 83 million a day, 3.5 million an hour, 58,000 a minute, and 40 per second. Now, while deploying an SD-WAN solution in a complex design, we ran across an issue where the IP phones with line appearances configured for MLHG, or as many of you know that, his multi-line hunk room, were, was not working. This is, of course, a very common feature, but just like SD-WAN, not all features that do the same thing are implemented the same way. And that's true for other technologies like IP phones, where they get implemented by vendors differently as well. So a Cisco phone versus a Polycom phone may have the same feature, but they handle it differently. Pretty wild, right? Because right about now you're thinking to yourself, well, there's standards in the industry, and surely SIP is a standard, and SD-WAN should follow standards too, right? Well, as we all know, really bad things sometimes happen in the real world, and isn't how that's handled the true measure of any relationship, including the important one you have with your carrier. So long story short, we put top-notch network engineers and top-notch SIP voice engineers onto the problem, and we have the guys who can debug everything down to the packet level and even tell you how it tastes, I kid you not. And in a matter of delivered a fully documented tech package to the vendor to say you have a bug, here it is, fix it. And they did. Why? Because even in the chaotic merger and acquisition environment we all live in with telecom today, Airspring has the spend, the relationships, the contracts, and the technical expertise to make it happen. That's a huge weight off your shoulders as all these new technologies like SD-WAN roll out and it's a huge weight off the shoulders of your customers. Bottom line, Airspring job done. It's that simple. Now, just out of curiosity, we scour Google and other news sources to see what our partner carriers had chosen for their own SD-WAN solutions. We even talked to quite a few of them, as we do all the time, because, of course, we're connected at the network level to nearly all of them, and some, we have some great personal relationships, too. So what we learned was some made early choices and then added to them. Others intend to sell SD-WAN with a single one-size-fits-all approach, and still others made choices based on APIs and other aspects which fit better with their long-term network function virtualization or NFV long-term goals. 
as they strive for things like universal CPE, virtual cross-connect, service chaining, unified threat management, faster provisioning, and more. All this tells us is that the future of SD-WAN is here to stay, and it gets brighter um, every single day. So this slide shows a lot of features that used to be done by a lot of different boxes in your network. Not anymore. All of it can be done on SD-WAN, and this is one of the many reasons you'll start to hear the term universal CPE or universal customer premise equipment more often. SD-WAN is going to simplify our lives and make the provisioning of services nearly instantaneous with virtual cross-connect service chaining, add-on features, and a lot of new functionality. So there's definitely exciting times ahead for sure. Now, certain SD-WAN solutions can also have a dramatic positive impact on applications, and that provides a much, much better user experience and perception. It does this by getting granular with specific application stacks and improving that performance via various techniques such as data reduction, optimized path selection, termination and regeneration of protocol traffic like TCP, and enforcing quality of service and quality of experience, QoS and QoE, in real time with the ability to make sub-second path changes and failovers which are imperceptible to users. It's absolutely terrific. Now, in the past, if you had two MPLS circuits, you couldn't use them at the same time. The BGP routing protocol forced you to have an active circuit and a passive circuit for standby. Failover on a good day took between 5 and 60 seconds. And while MPLS was a private network, some people won't consider it secure unless it's also encrypted. Well, SD-WAN improves all of that. You can have two MPLS or an MPLS plus an internet circuit or, frankly, any two circuits and bond them together into one big pipe while protecting the services that flow across them transparently. And while MPLS was private, SD-WAN as an overlay to an MPLS or any underlay circuit means that you can now make them secure with AES 256-bit military-grade encryption. Failovers are now stateful and occur in less than one second or sub-second, as we like to say. Now, application visibility and control is a big driver for SD-WAN. The problem with network monitoring in the past was that it often wasn't real-time. You know, you do an interval polling at, you know, often between one and five minutes. And it wasn't doing, uh, you know, and doing anything about what you saw was difficult, if not impossible. With SD-WAN, you can see it and you can do something about it in real time. Things like allow, throttle, or block can now be done at the click of a button. Because SD-WAN is so good in real time at watching and responding to traffic conditions, mixing in less reliable broadband circuits is not a problem. In fact, in places where you can only get one circuit, and that connection drops a lot of packets, uh, rendering IP phones unusable, you've got to keep packet loss at under 1% with IP phones, certain SD-WAN vendors can correct the condition. And that's truly amazing. I mean. Um, some of the things that, that we've seen is, you know, you can be dropping 10, 15% packets and depending on the solution that can get mitigated down to under 1% and still use those IP phones. So that's absolutely uh, terrific and a great feature to have. So where does SD-WAN fit? The use cases are what bring it all together and make it very, very exciting. Leveraging SD-WAN connectivity for day one is huge. It makes the customer happy and it puts money in your pocket day one. At AirSpring, we can bond anywhere from two to eight wireless connections together to bring a big pipe, uh, to create a big pipe rather, until the final circuits come in. Once they come in, what I found is that many customers choose to keep the wireless LTE and relegate it to failover duty. That's a win-win. AirSpring is really a buffet menu of technology and expertise, so just know that when it comes to failover, we got it nailed. We can take all these different carrier circuits and technologies and tie them into a unified network. So if you want to do like IPsec to you know VPN to MPLS, no problem. Uh, multiple SD-WAN solutions into one network, no problem. The list is endless, and you'll find that when you engage uh, my pre-sales engineering team and we start designing different solutions in different scenarios. It's really exciting. Just hammering the point home with this slide, the bottom line is that we want you to stay up. Meanwhile, we leverage our expertise, contracts, and relationships with the upstream carriers to get things fixed in the background. SD-WAN can't change the latency between site A and site B. However, it can control the jitter or the variability of latency between sites. It can correct out-of-order packets, and it can recreate lost packets. Mechanisms used by SD-WAN vendors to achieve this vary, but include things like packet duplication over a single link, packet duplication over multiple links, which is often called striping, or in some cases by utilizing complex algorithms like erasure coding with advanced parity to recreate lost or mangled packets, among others. So again, 
one circuit or many circuits, your quality of experience or QOE is exp exponentially better with SD-WAN.